Welcome to Talk About Question and Answers. In this segment, I'm going to share some questions that the viewers had and some of my insights into the issues. So if you want to send your question, you can either write it as a comment, but the preferred method is to send an email to seedofchoice at gmail.com. That way, I'll be more inclined to answer that question in this segment. So our first question comes from Angela Shepard. She writes, I had my tomato plants curling bad last year. So was my peppers and cucumber plants, and they were in a raised bed in a U-shape. Any thoughts? I, I don't think the U-shape necessarily is the issue here. So let's continue reading. I have a dried I have dried soil samples ready to go for a soil test. That will be interesting if you really want to know what's happening with the soil. I had someone put horse compost in the bottom and the top 12 inches. Hmm, and also compost from big box store. The raised beds are four feet tall. Now I would suspect that you're having an issue that came to my attention recently and it's actually call, caused by a herbicide, believe it or not, that is applied to hay fields. It's called Grazon or something like it and it's a broadleaf type of herbicide that kills all plants that are not grasses and when the horse or cow eats that their manure is going to be contaminated by this pesticide or this herbicide sorry and it's a persistent herbicide so it will persist in the soil and cause other plants also to die or have malformations so that's most likely the issue. Now it could be other issues, but because you're saying that both tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers, which are a completely different family from tomatoes and peppers, since they develop the same symptom, I would say that that most likely is the case. Of course, if you test it out, you might be able to, to find it for sure. And if that's the case, I'm really sorry. And this speaks to more than just what we as gardeners can do. This is a systemic issue. In a way, and this is, this is sad, in a way, the refuse, the byproducts of the animal industries, which historically were used by gardeners and was seen as an acid, and now it's not. You, see, you have manure lagoons and things like that to deal with all that issue. That's just going to get worse if persistent herbicides are in that manure, then nobody wants it. And I actually noticed that. I was looking in Craigslist for free sources of compost, and I saw that there were several farmers offering free compost for the taking. That means that there, is a, there isn't a real demand of people wanting to, to receive that compost. And having contaminated compost is not good so buyer beware or <laughs> gifter beware somebody's giving you um, manure composted manure you have to know that their animals are eating clean from clean pastures organic pastures otherwise you could be putting your garden at risk and that's the last thing you want to do <laughs> our next question comes from I am gift bearer it's related to Malabar spinach and they're asking for my Malabar spinach video and they're asking, is it related to okra? I would never guess that this plant will be slimy. And no, it's not related to okra at all. It just happens to have a mucilaginous consistency, especially when raw. But I don't think it has anything to do with okra. Okra is related to hibiscus, actually. So, no. Now, Spiritual Matters asks, could you plant the root of leek that you uprooted back into the garden? Actually, that's an interesting question, and I, that's not the first time somebody asks me that. Somebody actually told me to, when harvesting the leek, not to uproot it, and I actually tried last season, and the answer is no, at least in my, my experience, it does not grow back, it does not become a new leek. I'm sure this is, this is um, based on those Facebook videos, especially that people see that are geared towards the mainstream, I suppose, and not 
true gardeners were to say, oh, you can grow your, your produce once again and you'll never have to buy it again. That's not true. You can grow certain things like carrots to an extent and I think green onions most likely yes and perhaps celery I haven't tried that one but there is a reason why farmers start from seed it's just easier and you have a better plant it has the right structures it's not trying to mend itself in a way I wish that leek would you, you could get a new nice leek from just leaving the roots in or just replanting the roots but it's just not going to become the same thing no it, it just doesn't the Vilnev, I think that's, I can't read my handwriting well, but yeah, they ask, can this cornstarch method be used for other veggie seeds? And that's related to the carrot growing video I have, and I have to admit that the, the title for that one is a little bit clickbait, or pretentious maybe. Um, maybe it's not the best way, but I think it's a very interesting way of growing it, using a gel medium of cornstarch. And I would say, although I have not tried myself, to pre-sprout other seeds and use this gel method to grow other types of vegetables, I would say yes, it does work. Um, I just have to try it. Now, Zalia Butler Butler asks, where do you get your recipes from? And the answer is, it's really from all over in a way. But most of them, actually, I'm creating on the spot. Obviously, I work with preconceived ideas of recipes and tastes I've built up through experience but I'm not usually, like 90% of the time, following a recipe I'm actually creating on camera and that's usually how I do things and actually I almost never recreate recipes the same exact way because my, my way of thinking of creating recipes and, and cooking food is to make the process the important thing to learn. It's how to react, so it's a reaction in being able to combine things so that things taste good and you create a portfolio of tastes where, whereas you know where to go when you're trying to create. So if you can develop that, you don't need recipes. Of course you can try and, and see how a recipe works, but I, I, I'm always in favor of changing up recipes and making it their own, your own. All right, that's the question and answer segment of the show. And it's something new I'm trying. It's different from the veggie episodes I usually do, where I show from seed to table the journey of... <laughs> sounds very, very epic. The journey of, of a vegetable. But this is something more intimate, something where I can post more often and be able to answer some of your questions. So send your questions to seedofchoice at gmail.com. That's the best way of getting me. Of course, if it happens to be in a comment and I think it's uh, the, the question is germane to a broader discussion, I will pick it and we'll be able to talk and discuss. And remember, Talk About is a varied show. There's this segment. There might be just... It's open, so whatever happens, happens. Stay tuned.